All right, what's going on guys? So tomorrow is the big day for me. Tomorrow I'm running 50 miles nonstop. Well, there might be a, a few little stops, but pretty much nonstop. And I'm here tonight, the night before, getting everything I can possibly think of together to have the most successful 50 mile run I could possibly have tomorrow. You know, there's a lot more that goes into distance running than just going out there and running for a long time until you're done. You know, there's a lot of prep work that goes uh, into this. There's a lot of prior planning to make sure that you're set up for success. And the most important and critical thing that you can do for yourself to make sure that you are prepped appropriately and gonna be able to sustain yourself while you're out there running is make sure that your nutrition and your hydration is on point. And not only just that, but also just all around comfort. Do you have the right gear? Do you have the right headphones? Is everything charged? Is everything ready to go to be able to go along with you for the amount of time that you're gonna be out there. And these things are gonna be common across the board. It doesn't really matter if you're running your first 5K or maybe you're going out there running a half or even a full marathon all the way up to a 100 mile ultra because it's these things that are really gonna get you across the finish line. It doesn't really matter at the end of the day how motivated or how physically prepared you are to run a race. It's the sustainment, the logistical piece that really matters. And this is a lot of stuff, you know, this is everything that I feel personally I'm gonna, I'm gonna want or need during my 50 mile run tomorrow. Um, but they're very dependent on me and the things that I've figured out work best for me in the past. Uh, I'll go into each and every one of these products and I would encourage you to try each and every one of them yourself so that you can figure out what works and, and what doesn't work and what's best for you in the future. Just to give you some quick context so you know why I've chosen some of the things I've chosen, I will be running tomorrow in uh, Hawaii. Uh, the weather should be anywhere between 75 to 90 degrees at any given time. I'll be starting earlier in the morning, roughly around 6 or 6.30, maybe not that early, but early in the morning. Um, and it should be sunny all day. The route that I'm running is a nine mile out and back. Uh, so I'll have to run it 5.5 times to get the 50 miles in. And I anticipate the route, I've gone and, and reconned it once before, to be elevation changes sporadically, okay, rolling hills, and the entire route is road, nothing's trail. So that's what I'm working with and that's how I prepared myself to be able to sustain myself while I'm out there doing that run tomorrow. All right, so let's get into it. I, I wanna talk about nutrition first. I feel like that's the most important thing um, you should be considering when you're going out there and preparing for your runs, all right? First of all, know that for the average person, you're burning anywhere between 100 and 150 calories per mile that you run. And that's a lot of calories, man. That adds up really fast. You gotta think if I'm going out and running 50 miles, then that's you know roughly 7,000 calories that I can expect to burn while I'm out there running. That's ridiculous, right? It's true though, that's how it is. Another fun fact, it takes about 3,000 to 3,500 calories extra on top of your needed calories in order to gain a solid pound of body mass, okay? So going out there and burning 7,000 calories means I would burn two pounds of body mass in one day. It's kind of ridiculous, right? Now obviously that's not how you want to go about losing weight. Obviously if I just didn't sustain myself during this run, I probably wouldn't be able to complete it and I would be, it would be detrimental to my body. So we have to sustain ourselves. So if we know that we're burning 100 to 150 calories per mile that we run, and we wanna make sure that we are maintaining that math appropriately. So we're preloaded, meaning you start off with calories already in the system, you've got fuel in the tank before you even start going, and then you just maintain the, the full tank, or you know at least three quarters of the way full, as you're doing your run all the way until the very end of your run, regardless of how far you're going. That's how you appropriately sustain yourself. That's just the basic calorie math, the beer math, if you will, of sustaining yourself during a run. Now you can also look at things like macros, where you're talking about protein, carbs, and fats. Um, I won't get too far into all that, just for the sake of keeping it simple, but I will tell you that your number one friend is gonna be carbohydrates. This is not the time to go on a carb diet, okay? If you're going out there running long distances, or just running in, in general, you should be taking in carbs to sustain yourself. That's your main source of energy for your body. So you'll see a lot of these snacks that I have here are heavy on the carbs. Now fats and proteins are good too. Obviously you're gonna want the protein to help sustain the muscle mass that you have, help uh, with appropriate muscle function while you're actually going out there on your run and to prevent cramps, same thing with the fats, okay? That's gonna help you, your body regulate and maintain itself appropriately um, as you go and put it through all this, uh, all this work that you're doing. But again, number one friend during this is gonna be carbohydrates. 
Now I've got choices for myself and that's just because with such a long distance run, I can't just fuel myself on a bunch of gels, right? That's just not gonna sit well in my stomach. I'm gonna get sick of it after a while. I'm not gonna wanna get it down. It's gonna end up being a problem for me and that's just something I've discovered for myself. I wouldn't recommend that you do a whole, you know, long distance run on just gels. It's just not very good for you and you're not gonna feel very good. So I've mixed it up. I've got simple carbs, which are fast stacking sugars, and I've got complex carbs. Some that just uh, break down a little slower. They're gonna be fuel in the tank that'll last a little longer. I do have my gels here. I've gone with the uh, Cliff brand, and I've got some that have caffeine inside them, and I have some that don't. Okay, the caffeine ones I plan on using sporadically throughout the run, and that's just to stop. It's to give myself a little bit extra fuel and also to stop any headaches that might come on uh, during the run itself. Now these headaches I'm talking about, that's what's gonna happen to athletes that are used to taking anywhere between 300 and 500 milligrams of caffeine a day. If you're not replenishing that caffeine like you would normally and you're working extra hard that day, more than likely you're gonna have a headache. So this will prevent that. It'll also give you a little extra energy, but you wanna go easy on the caffeine because it's gonna dehydrate you, right? So just take it easy with the caffeine. I brought a little extra for myself because I know that I can handle it and it's actually a benefit for me. I've got honey stingers. Okay, these, uh, these are like complex carbs and simple carbs, but it's just straight up carb bars basically. And they just melt in your mouth. Really easy to get down. They taste good. And you don't have to do a whole lot of chewing to get it down, okay? And they also digest very easily. So these are just good to have in your pocket. They're super light. Um, and they'll hit you fast. I've also got some bars that are gonna sustain me for a little further and just mix up the, uh, the routine of those fast hitting carbs. These, these are gonna take a little bit longer to digest, but I'll get a lot more bang for my buck over the long run as I'm running, okay? So I've got clip bars. You guys have seen the clip bars before probably, basic clip, clip bars. And then I also have the nut butter bars and these have a, a little bit more fats in them than your traditional uh, clip bar. And they're a little softer as well. Okay, so these are gonna help me sustain over the long run. And then these are gonna be a little more fast acting for me. I've also got the uh, Cliff Blocks. Okay, there's actually two servings per package in here. So it's 200 calories per package. And these act similarly um, to the gels, but it will just give me something to put in my mouth and let kind of melt slowly as I'm running. And, and these are gonna be perfect for when I don't really wanna eat anything, but I gotta get something down. Now on the run that I'm running, there will be aid stations and they will have things like bananas, um, oranges, potato chips, and Coke. More than likely I will be indulging in those aid station snacks as well, but these things I know are gonna get me through uh, the race tomorrow. I don't wanna to be too dependent on the orchestration of the race itself. I also have uh, some gum. Now the reason I'm bringing the gum is because I remember when I went out and did my 50K, uh, I was eating a lot of snacks, taking down a lot of sugar, and I just felt like, you know like when you take a, a, too much sugar during the day, your, your teeth just feel like chalky or your mouth feels kind of chalky? Well, I thought some gum would help me out with that just to get rid of that feeling. So when I'm starting to feel a little bit that way, maybe I can clear the palate a little bit, um, just chew some gum for a second, spit it out, and start fresh, you know what I mean? So that's why I thought gum would be a good idea. Now, my game plan is to take in at least 200 calories every two to three miles, and that's still that's still kind of cutting myself short. We talked about the calorie math. That doesn't, that doesn't add up. That doesn't keep me even. But I think for me personally, and I like to test myself endurance-wise to see how far I can go without sustainment, um, I think that's gonna work out for me well, but I'll have some extra snacks on standby just in case. I'm also gonna have a really nice breakfast and a really nice dinner, and I've been preloading with carbs for the last couple days. A lot of spaghetti, a lot of rice, a lot of bread, stuff like that. So that's the nutrition piece. We'll move that over to the side. Now let's talk about hydration. So hydration is gonna be super critical for me um, out here while I'm running in Hawaii, okay? Because I know just from running out here already that I start sweating like crazy after two to three miles of running out here. Whether it be the humidity or maybe my metabolism is just on fire in the moment, um, I sweat a lot. So I know I have to replenish those salts, that, that potassium, those electrolytes um, that I'm just sweating out constantly while I'm out there running. I need to make sure that that is staying regulated and that my body has enough of those electrolytes to keep my body moving. Otherwise, I'm gonna start cramping. And you know, if, I don't know if you guys have ever experienced that before, but if you start cramping in certain areas, it's completely debilitating and it stops you in your tracks and, and potentially will stop your run and cut it short and you won't be able to finish. So this is critical. So you wanna make sure you're well hydrated before you even start your run. You wanna be like drinking plenty of water. I would recommend maybe some coconut water, um, plenty of salt throughout the day, 
and don't overdo it with the water. You can actually give yourself water poisoning um, if you drink too much water because you're just flushing all the electrolytes out of your system, okay? So just make sure you're getting enough water throughout the day, make sure you're getting enough salt, enough sugar. Uh, it's not the time to go on a diet. You're also gonna wanna bring supplementation because Sometimes, you know, even with the nutrition that you have, while it does provide some sort of electrolytes, a lot of, especially a lot of these over the counter, you know, blocks, clip bars, things like that, um, and the gels, they provide a lot of uh, electrolytes and the value of the nutrition facts. However, there are also things that you can get to really make sure that your hydration remains on point to help you with your performance. And also, if you're having some sort of emergency situation, i.e., cramping up horrifically then you can take some of this stuff down and it's gonna help you get through that challenge as quickly as possible so that you can finish the race. So I've got for myself some Enduralite's Extreme um, Electrolyte Replacement Tablets. They're actually pills, okay? There's uh, three in a pack and you only need one at a time. I plan on taking one of these before I start the race and then one every few miles just to make sure that my electrolytes are staying on point and I don't have to eat anything extra. I can just take it down with some water and it's gonna hit my system instantly. So that's what I have those for. I also have uh, some noon or none tablets. I'm not really sure how to say it, but I have these that will actually, the little tablets, um, effervescent tablets that you can put into your water source. It'll fizzle and you can just drink it with your water as you're drinking your water. Okay, so same concept here. I'm not gonna put this always in my water, but maybe every other water bottle that I drink or maybe every third water bottle that I drink, I'll make sure to throw an effervescent tablet in there just to make sure. This one has a little caffeine in it. Again, I like to give myself options for a little bit of added boost, a little bit of extra caffeine just because <laughs> I, I do like my caffeine during the day and I know that it is a performance enhancer for me as long as I don't overdo it. So just don't overdo it. I also have some downrange hydration mixes, the Nightline Goes. All right, those are gonna help me as well. They're, they're just powders that you drop into your water source, you get it down real quick. These are gonna keep me hydrated um, throughout the entire time I'm out there. I plan on dropping one of these every three to four miles, something like that. And it also has um, a whole bunch of amino acids in there just to just to keep my body going and uh, uh, prevent muscle breakdown as I'm putting it through all these miles. And then I also have some emergency backup energy. Okay, these are just the Mio squirts. You might have seen these before, but these come with a a bunch of caffeine in them. Um, there's also some vitamins uh, from performance you're, that you would typically see with sports performance, like vitamin B12, vitamin B6. Um, so some other. Uh, performance enhancing vitamins in these, but I'm bringing this as an emergency precaution just in case I really need an extra boost to get me through those last few miles or, you know, really just in case, you know, any, any situation that arises where I'm like, man, I just really wish I had a squirt of caffeine <laughs> to get me through this. That's what you can use this for. You don't even have to really actually put in your water. You just took a quick little squirt in your mouth and you're good to go. So this is just for emergencies, okay? So that's all electrolyte replacement and sustainment. Now let's just talk about the actual hydration, which is how much water you should be taking in. So you should have showed up to the race already hydrated, well hydrated, but you gotta make sure that you're remaining well hydrated and not over hydrating during your race, right? So depending on the distance of your race, again, this is all applicable to anywhere from 5K to 100 miles, you might wanna invest in some sort of hydration kit. I'm actually bringing two different styles of hydration kits with me tomorrow because one of them is a little more bulkier and one of them is a little more pro low profile. And I know that there's a chance that I'm gonna wanna switch in and out between a bulkier setup and a more low profile setup as I'm doing my race. So the low profile setup is just a waist pack. This goes around your waist and it carries two easy release uh, water bottles, quick water bottles that just pop out and then you can just squirt the water in your mouth as you're running and then it pops right back in so you don't have to stop this pack i have i really like i've only run with it a couple times but it also has a little compartment uh, that you can put all your snacks in or your cell phone or headphones or whatever and i also like the size of the water bottles because it makes sure that you don't bring too much water with you because the last thing you want to do is overdo it with the water you want to make sure really you dial it down where it's just the right appropriate amount for you because if you overdo it with the water you're going to end up with cramps um, in your abdomen area. And again, you're just gonna overhydrate yourself. You're gonna flush out all those electrolytes, those salts and sugars that you need, that your body requires in order to continue to perform. You, know, you can also take off the tops real quick, drop an effervescent tablet in there for some extra electrolytes. You know, throw the cap back on, you're good to go. You know, this thing is a really convenient, low profile, uh, low weight option for you runners out there.
And then my other bulkier pack setup is a running vest. I've got the uh, Osprey Duro 6. Really like this vest. It, it, you can't even tell you're wearing it when you're running. Um, the only thing is, obviously, it's going to weigh a little more. And this pack specifically will hold an entire 50 ounces um, in the Camelback in, inside of it. All right, and I think it's like 1.5 liters or something like that. But the cool thing with wearing a pack is you can just throw it on and, and just forget about it because you have a tube that runs around through the front, a drinking tube, and all you have to do is pull it from the magnet, suck on a little bit, put it back on the magnet. All right, so it's a lot easier than fumbling around um, with your water bottles. I wouldn't recommend throwing anything into your Camelback bladder as far as like effervescent tablets or you know, water flavoring or anything like that because that tends to create mold over time. So you're only gonna wanna use water with something like this. But this will also allow you to just sort of sip your water as you're doing your running so you don't gulp it down. You won't end up with those cramps um, in, in your abdomen like I talked before. And it's it's an easy thing, it's an easy reminder to just, you know, every, every little while just grab it, sip, put it away, grab it, sip, put it away. So just to make sure you stay hydrated. And these packs are also really good, you know, because plenty of storage. This one even has like a little zipper pouch where I plan on putting my cell phone so I don't have to hold it while I'm running. Plenty of places to put uh, snacks with easy access. And this one even has um, a little backpack area where if you wanted to put like, you know, maybe a, a rain jacket or a cold weather jacket if you're running in the cold or whatever, any extra stuff you might need, you can put it in the back. And you know, you, you can go for a really long time and sustain yourself with something like this. I could actually fit all this stuff into this pack if I really wanted to, okay? But I'm not doing that this time, I don't need to. But I'm still gonna bring it and I still do plan on running with this purely for the convenience of having stuff at my front that I can get to, hold my phone, hold my GoPro, because I'm gonna film the run, and also so that I can have that, that sipping capability, because that's the way I like to do it. But I'll still have this as an option. I plan on running with this at one point, um, just to be able to take this off and just, just breathe a little bit, you know what I mean? All right, now taking care of the body. Let me move all this stuff out of the way. So first thing, I think this is gonna be most important for longer distance runs. Um, but again, that's completely relevant to you depending on what you call a long distance run or if you're prone to blisters, okay? This is called second skin. All right, you can add these to wherever you typically get blisters. For me, I sometimes get them on the Achilles, um, right above the, he the heel where the shoe sometimes rubs. So I'll put this on that area of my foot before I even start running, okay? Just to give myself a second layer of skin um, and protect myself from blisters while I'm out there running 50 miles because the last thing I want is a blister while I'm running out there that far, okay? And these will also help if you do get a blister, you can throw one of these bad boys on there and it will, it will at least subside the pain of the blister while you continue your run um, until you take it off later. <laughs> that sucks, but these are, these are really good to have. I would definitely think about prepping with something like this or at least having it on you for emergency situations. Body glide. This stuff, never leave home without it, man. This stuff will go anywhere where you could possibly have any sort of friction. So in between uh, where the thighs rub, um, on the lower part of your back, if you're wearing a waist uh, kit or a uh, backpack like I am, anywhere where there might be a little bit of rubbing there while you're running, <laughs> Your, your uh, nipples, believe it or not. A lot of people suffer from nipple rubbing while they're out there running long distances. This will help with that. Um, and even on your feet sometimes to prevent blisters. And I'll also go as far as to say this stuff will work wonders um, at preventing monkey butt. And I'll go ahead and let you search what monkey butt is. But if you are somebody who is worried about or ever has suffered from monkey butt, just apply this before you start on your trek and you should be good to go. Sports tape, now this is really just in case uh, I do roll an ankle or maybe like twist my knee or anything. Anything where I think it just is causing a, a little bit more discomfort, like it's just like a minor injury, something I think I might be able to work through. I'm gonna wanna tape it up so that it doesn't get any worse um, and so that I can actually get through my run, okay? Now that is, that is a personal choice for me. I'm not advocating that you run through injury or anything like that, but I plan on finishing this 50 miler no matter what, even if I do roll my ankle, if I'm able to keep going, I wanna do whatever I can just to bandage it up and move out, you know what I mean? So that's good for emergencies. And then speaking of emergencies, never leave home without it, a pack of baby wipes. Now, I would say this, you would wanna bring these baby wipes for obvious reasons. If you've ever challenged yourself with a run, uh, you know that there are chances 
especially when you're going through calories as fast as you are, that you might have an emergency situation on the side of the road and you need something to take care of that. That's what baby wipes are for. But these are also really good uh, for wiping yourself down after you've sweated for a long time and you have like a whole bunch of salts in your body. Having that much salt just on your skin kind of aggravates the skin, especially where the skin keeps rubbing itself. So like right in between here, uh, your, the other part of your elbow tends to get uh, rubbing and rashing there or behind the knees. Um, again, inside the thighs, your armpits, stuff like that. If you just let the salt sit there, it's just gonna continually rub against the skin and it's gonna cause friction and it's gonna call, cause rashing. So if you just take some baby wipes to it every now and then throughout your long run, get rid of that salt and make a nice clean surface, uh, that'll help you out tremendously um, if you're somebody who deals with rashing. Pain reliever, and I'm going with ibuprofen. This is again, something that's more for emergency situations. I will never advocate to just be taking ibuprofen uh, just because or, or as a preventer or anything like that. I, I bring this kind of stuff just in case I need it. So if I do roll my ankle, uh, you know, I twist a knee, something like I fall and I hurt my hand or something like that, and I just kind of want the pain to go away uh, to get through the run, I'll, I'll take a little bit of ibuprofen. Same thing if I have a headache that just will not go away, you know, and I know I'm hydrated, I'm just having a headache for some reason, maybe just from all the jolting, um, I, might, I might take, you know, some ibuprofen to help with that pain. But that's all it's for. It's really just for emergency situations, but that's definitely something you want to have in your kit bag when you're going on your long runs, because uh, it's better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. Sunscreen, uh, again, for obvious reasons. So I'm gonna be out there running in the sun the entire time with minimal shade. So I will have sunscreen on everywhere on my body that's exposed to the sun, okay? Because 10 hours out in the sun is a long time. And I'll especially make sure that I have this on my face. I've also got a runner's hat, okay? Now I'm not really one for wearing a hat while I run. I don't normally do that, but because I'm gonna be out there for so long, I wanna bring this for when I need it. I feel like I'm gonna need a runner's hat at one point just to get the sun out of my eyes and also to keep the sun off my back um, because for some reason the sun always hits the back of your neck the most, even if you're running into the sun, that's how it feels. And then a bonus is if I'm wearing this, it, it can, will kind of act as like a headband and keep the sweat out of my eyes. So I actually feel like I might as well start getting used to wearing things like these because I think that once I actually do wear it and I see the benefit, I'm just gonna want it everywhere I go. So I got one for this. I would highly recommend that you consider doing the same because I think it's gonna be a great idea that I did it. Sunglasses, okay, these are my go-to sunglasses. These are the uh, Spy Bounties, okay. I wear these things everywhere. They're like so beat up and, and <laughs> frankly nasty but like hey these are my sunglasses i never leave home without them i got them all the time i run with these all the time and so i'll be running with them tomorrow as well the entire time you got to keep the sun out of your eyes man that's just one more thing that will fatigue you quickly um, while you're out there running keep the sun out of your eyes just just squinting even while you're running is going to expel more energy than you need to out there you're going to want to show up with a good pair of running socks uh, that should already be broken in, okay? Don't go out there with brand new socks. They should be broken in socks. Nothing with holes or anything like that, not that broken in, but just, you know, semi-used socks that you've already ran with before and you know work good for you. Get some decent ones that'll help with blister control and that will help with blood circulation um, with the feet, okay? I, I go with the uh, Saucony running socks. These things are money for me. And I also recommend you bring an extra pair of socks just in case you step in some water or uh, maybe you do have a blister, uh, something like that. Changing out your socks can really make all the difference sometimes. So I'd always recommend bringing an extra pair of socks just in case you need them. I like to uh, run with music in. I don't like to run with nothing because I just feel like I get really bored and I can't zone out appropriately like I like to. So make sure you get yourself some really good headphones. I would recommend that you get something that's Bluetooth capable. All right, because if you get something with a wire, it's just gonna be banging around all over the place on you. You know, and that's just not what you want when you're out there in a long run. So get something that's Bluetooth and get something that isn't gonna fall out, something that you have to keep adjusting. Get something that fits in your ear and it's it's leave it and forget it. It's in there and you're good to go. And also make sure they're charged, all right? I've been using the uh, Skull Candy uh, Push Ultras and these things have been really good for me. They last a really long time. They are adjustable to your ear and they fit really, really well in the ear holes, okay? I have an issue with my ear holes, not all uh, headphones fit good in there, but these ones fit really well. So I'm gonna bring these with me to keep myself motivated listening to some good music and, and probably some podcasts, stuff like that, motivating podcasts to help get me through. 
Something else that I'll be doing that I think is a good idea is to make sure that you get some performance uh, underwear, okay? Something that is mid-level that will go down to wherever you might get some sort of friction in the thighs, okay? Just wearing that will make all the difference. And last but not least, a good pair of worn in running shoes. So I'm actually pushing it myself with these running shoes. I got these in the mail, not even two weeks ago, <laughs> but I have managed to break them in with about 50 miles, okay? And they actually feel really good. I'm excited to wear these shoes. These are the uh, Saucony Endorphin Shift 2s. They've got plenty of cushion, plenty of support, and uh, a really wide toe box, which is really important for me. And I wanna say that's important for most runners, especially if you're looking at running long distances, because your feet tend to swell up after uh, you've been running on them for a while. So you wanna make sure you have that extra room for comfort and make sure that blood circulation maintains uh, the way it should. Never show up to race day with not broken in shoes, okay? You wanna make sure they're broken in. I like to go with the 50 mile number. I think if you get 50 miles under your shoes, then they're broken in, okay? And that doesn't necessarily have to be like a run. You know, you could be walking with them when you go to the store and stuff, uh, that will help. You can also wear them in the shower and just kind of, you know, make them a little more pliable. That'll help break, break them in if you're in an emergency situation and you need to break them in for, uh, fast. But never go with brand new shoes. That's gonna create huge problems for your feet if you show up like that. Broken in shoes only, guys. And that is my loadout, all this stuff. That is my loadout for my 50 mile run tomorrow. It looks like a lot of stuff, and it is a lot of stuff, but again, it's super important. This is what you need in order to successfully sustain yourself and successfully finish a run like that. And again, all this stuff works across the board because long distance runs are gonna be relevant to your idea of what a long distance run is for you. So whatever your, your current level is, like I said before, if you've never run a day in your life in a 5K run, you know, that, that could sound like eternity to you and it can feel that way too. So you have to make sure you're prepared. But I'm excited to put all this stuff to use. You know, I feel pretty prepared. Um, I am gonna be shooting content of myself doing that run. Uh, so you can be on the lookout for that video. That'll be a separate video. I hope that this was helpful information to everybody. Don't forget that I will uh, drop links to these things in the uh, description section of this video so you can go check them out and try them out for yourself. If anybody has uh, anything that works for themselves, any ideas of their own, uh, you know, stuff like that, any input for the community, please, by all means, drop that in the comments for everybody because this video is really meant to be helpful for everybody that's watching it. You know, I wanna see all you guys out there crushing your goals and getting after it. So uh, whatever we can do to help each other, the more the better. But for now, I need to go ahead and make sure I eat myself a good dinner uh, in preparation for the run tomorrow. I think I'm gonna make pancakes. I also need to clean all this up and organize it and make sure that it's ready to go. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't done so already so you don't miss any of my future videos. And besides that, I've got nothing else for you. I'll see you on the next one.